Here we go. All right, everyone, Amber Mack is here with us, tech expert. I really, really look up to this woman. So, so awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to hang with me. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. Yes, girl. Okay. So, as you know, I'm, I've ventured out onto my own, doing my thing in the, the digital space kind of thing. What, what would your advice be, I and mean, we could just be sort of general, uh, for, for people like me or others who are just getting started uh, to, 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 you know, get themselves out there in terms of branding this space? I, I think that's a really good question, and I also think a lot of people struggle with exactly what you're talking about, is that they don't know how to become a brand, but I would argue that a lot of people are already brands, they just don't recognize it in themselves. So I would say, for example, I think sometimes uh, we do a disservice to ourselves by not really taking the proper business procedures to identify what our brand is. And what I mean by that is you could do a simple exercise to decide that, okay, what is my target audience? And maybe there's three circles of your target that overlap in the middle. You could talk about what are the three things that I'm passionate about and that I care about. So tell me a little bit about monetizing because there are lots of, of aspects to that. I mean, for you specifically, what are your streams of income, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a few different streams of income. I'm really good friends with a guy named Andy Walker, yes. who's a great technology uh, journalist and expert. And he always said to me, have multiple streams of revenue. So essentially, I have my speaking career, my speaking business. I do some writing. I do hosting. I also have a digital marketing company and a few other things. So I love the idea that, okay, you know, I have all these streams of revenue coming in and it just allows me if the speaking season is kind of slow then I can pick up revenue from other streams so I think that's key is to not kind of put your eggs all in one basket to continue like for you for example maybe you continue to host um, events and do all this other stuff that you're great at maybe you do some writing and some some video work there's opportunities out there to create content and I think again just think about it as having these multiple streams yeah what, what would you say is the the best and worst part of, of doing what you do, which is sometimes difficult to, to explain in one go, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> that is a great what question. What do you do? I'm like, you know. I'm like, I don't know, check me out online. Uh, so I think that there, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, I think that the best part is the freedom. So if I want to be able to go to my son's soccer game after school, I have the freedom to do so, and I have no boss who's gonna tell me I can't go. So the freedom to me is the most important, which is why I do what I do. I think on the negative side, I think a lot of people struggle because there's no routine or structure in your day as an entrepreneur. Right. And, and for me, I love that. I thrive in that organized chaos, and I love it. I don't want to do the same thing day to day. So it works really what, well. Um, do you have a team? But what? Yeah, so um, I do. So this is kind of an interesting thing that I don't get to talk a lot about. But uh, over the years, you know, first when I first started, I was by myself. But over the years, I've been able to have help. So uh, my husband is a cameraman and editor. So that's very, very helpful. helpful. <laughs> and my mom and dad do all of my accounting and my contracts, any type of new business development. Oh, my dad nice. works on that. My mom does all my bookkeeping. My brother and I have a digital marketing company, and he helps me on the social side. So I didn't have someone when I started out, but it's gotten so busy that I do, and, and I have mostly my family around me, and I love that because I trust them. Yes, of course. And that's a big thing for me, is just working with people I trust, and uh, I feel like I've finally gotten to the place that I do have support. Definitely. Uh, how do you come up with, with content ideas, just to, you know, be constantly putting stuff out? And... Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a bit of a, a struggle in some ways, in the sense that you always have to be on. I think when you're an entrepreneur in the digital space, you have to live and breathe everything that's going on on social pretty much. I don't want to say 24-7, but you know, I'm online till you know late at night and then early in the morning. So for me, content ideas come through the latest news that I'm consuming on social media. Okay. And, and I think that means that I'm always up to date on the trends and things that are happening so I can produce timely content. I never want to be behind. I also work in tech, so that means I always have to be a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it, you know, it's a bit of a grind. And I love the grind. What are some of the tools? Like, what are some tools you can you can suggest to, to people like me who are just getting started? Well, I think this is super exciting because if you want to get started, there are tools out there that will help you to do so without needing a big team around you. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for invoicing, when you're managing any type of payments coming through, FreshBooks yes. is amazing. FreshBooks is one of my favorite sites uh, and services, I should say, and it allows you to manage all of your invoicing in one place okay. because. It, Invoicing is kind of a cumbersome thing that no one likes to do, but you all want to get paid, so you have to do that. Mm -hmm. So FreshBooks, I would say uh, Hootsuite, I use for social media to manage social media posts. That's really helpful. The third one I'm going to mention is one of my favorites. It's called Canva. I'm not sure if you're familiar with is that. Is that 
design? Yeah, it's design. So Canva. how do you spell it again? C A N V A. And we're gonna put all the info in the bottom, by the way. But it's yeah. so helpful. So it's a web service, but they have an iPhone app as well, and essentially allows you to create social media images. It, if you want to create a Facebook post, it has the template for the size of the Facebook post Got it. and a pre-made template where you just type in text in. 30 seconds or 60 seconds, you'll make an image that looks like you had a professional designer help you. So this oh. saves you money. Uh, also another one is BuzzSumo, and uh, this is a, a service to get all the latest trending topics that are happening in social, so you know you can share some of that content. That's good. That is another one that I use all the time, and uh, that's probably kind of it. Those four tools tend to be very helpful, and again, we're talking pretty much for free or a small fee. Mm -hmm. So for an entrepreneur who's just starting out, you can use all these to really streamline your business and be able to do it on your own until you can afford to get someone to help you. Exactly. What do you do with your video? Because do you have YouTube or you just post it within your own space? Yeah, so um, I'm really uh, focusing right now on live, so yeah, live streaming. So I'm doing a lot of Facebook Live work and, and Periscope as well. And I think because, I mean, for both of us, because we come from the broadcast world, I think that is a, a differentiator that you can do yes. live. Yes. And I think there's a lot of people who are doing YouTube right now who do a great job, but being able to go live and, and be able to express something clearly and concisely, I think that can set you apart a bit. So that's some area, that's the area that I'm focusing on. Oh, lovely, okay. And then you, I noticed you have a, a nice little studio set up now, which, <laughs> which works. Yeah, <laughs> so I have a little studio in my basement yeah. and uh, my husband set it up and basically is really simple but uh, we just put it together because I wanted to do more broadcasts but I felt like I didn't have a place to really go do them and we had a space downstairs and I think maybe we spent all of $200 and yeah. turned it into a little studio we wallpapered the walls with really inexpensive wallpaper and he does have some good uh, camera gear and lights but uh, yeah we, we got it kind of set up so we plan to do more and more down there yeah I gotta just use what I have you know I have a, a few things here and there some lights and some backdrops and so forth but it's just the whole having people come to your home, like, you know, for, yeah. for me right now, right? Like, you have a basement, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, I, I like that idea of just being able to do it from the comfort of your home. If you're doing the Facebook Lives, you yeah, can just yeah. be there. Well, that's the thing right? is that instead of having to drag everything out and set mm -hmm. it up, mm -hmm. I think also a really inexpensive way to get something that looks good on camera is, you know, two IKEA bookcases. Fill them with your favorite books and yes. shoot in front of that. That always looks good and it adds that texture to your video. Mm -hmm. So that's a really inexpensive way to get started and have something that looks, you know, kind of, we know even from Facebook, for example, I've been learning this from my friend Brittle Star, that if you're talking about trending topics that are happening on Facebook, the more timely you are with your content, the better it travels today through social media. So you want to be able to quickly get a video up and get it out there mm -hmm. and, or a blog post or whatever it might be. And so with Facebook Live, you can still use the video after the fact? Yeah, so Facebook Live will share, save, sorry, save the video okay. so that you can still boost it if you want as far as paying to promote it. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, people think, oh, well, I'm not going to spend money on advertising my own content. But you can boost videos for a couple dollars exactly, a day. It's exactly. very affordable. So I think in order to exceed and, and, and do well in this space, that you need to invest a little bit of money, even if it's a couple hundred dollars a month, just to promote your own content. Agreed, agreed.